live in the terminal. Let me show you what I mean by learn to live in the, in the terminal. You must learn to work very fast and live in the terminal. Whatever you can do with your GUI, that is your graphic user interface, can be done can be done in your terminal. For example, let's say you want to create you want to create a, a file, a remove file, or make directory, or even start a Node.js application. You can start it very fast without even using your GUI. So I'll do something like uh, make the models models uh, routes controllers. Uh, okay. So you, you can create your folders, you can create folders from the terminal, you can create files from the terminal, you can even do aliases. Aliases means I am writing minimal code. I'm not sort of doing touch. I have aliases on my system that can help me to uh, write minimum code, like touch app.js. But well, let me do in index.js now. But okay, that is create touch. I have this guy in. I have, instead of writing node mon and all these things, I have just command that can spin up my server very quickly. I have mon as my node mon. So you need to learn how to live in the terminal. You, it is, it is a must. If you, if you want to do well, it is a must that you leave, learn to live in the terminal. So I will go to the next one. You need to know how the OS work, how even the path variable in the Windows is somehow different. From you can learn soap or grpc i'm not done this anyways but i've done a little bit of graphql then you need to know your what your basic organization your token you need to know that we have yeah, just web token we have argon 2 and the likes then you need to know how to do your redis or your mem cache or even your node as far as node.js is concerned now your node cache again uh your unit testing functional testing, to your testing is very important. So all, all this guide, there is there is no way that you go through this this re, uh, this strict guide that you will not become, if you are really faithful with your learning, you are really faithful, I'm not saying learning on the surface, if you really follow this guide, if, if I click on this guide now, it's giving me to, take me to another, another route, another link that I can just learn these guys deep down. So if you're really faithful with this roadmap, or if you have a better one at your disposal, there is no how that you will not build a robust API or become a very seasoned backend developer. So uh, what I would advise, what I would say is just have a guide. You must have a goal, not just building. And uh, you must have a goal. Take all these all this points, then use it to build a what, a project that that you can that that you'll be proud to share with your with your colleagues let's say for instance now take what is microservices how can i write a microservice how can i write what are the tools am i using rabbit mq am i using boo to to, uh, to manage my broker am i using kafka that is one so if i write microservices how can i communicate am i using an external communication between my services let's say for, for example i have the other service, I have the user service and I have the admin service. So how can I communicate with this thing? Then how can I deploy all the services? Am I using Docker Compose? Am I use, using Kubernetes? So all the all these things, all these all these steps or all these points can be broken down to the best minimum. What I mean is that you can deep down, deep dive into microservice and start writing it bit by bit. You, you write on how to deploy, on how to communicate external communication or using Kubernetes, then by, by doing so, you are expanding your capacity. You are becoming the best of developer when it comes to backend development. You're not just thinking to what you know, but you, are, you have a guide that you want to get to. What I mean is that I am coming from this stage here, from backend here, then I want to reach this place. Even this guy is saying what? Have a look at this DevOps, DevOps roadmap. It means you can even shoot out of just learning back end. Because the truth is that employers these days, I don't know if, if you bear me witness, employers these days uh, that are employing back end, they are really looking for guys that know a bit of DevOps. 
they want to just deploy on AWC, uh, AWS. They want to, if you can deploy on, on your Linux server, they need someone that can deploy easily on DigitalOcean. They want to have all those skills. If not full, at least, at least uh, some snippets of those, all those skills. So what I would advise is that we, I know, I know that there are, there are bosses here. I'm just talking for, to people that are maybe just starting up. You want to have a roadmap and you want to strip, stick to it very well. You want to have a roadmap. You want to learn what is, okay, how can I do my load balancing with Nginx or maybe HTTP proxy? How can I scale up my, my, uh, what's it called? My database. How can I, restart my database in case of downtime. So you need to learn the wise, wise, wise. Okay, I'll just share this uh, with us before I ask a question. One of my students uh, uh, walked up to me and said, okay, how do you learn? I noticed that you learn, you post content on, on what's it called? On LinkedIn, on Dello2. How do you learn? One of my answers was that, okay, I go to Play Store sometimes. Play store to look at apps that are being built by people, guys like us. For instance, what is Kuda doing? How is Kuda gathering their information? How is Kuda doing this? How is Kuda managing large amount of of users without crashing? I don't know if they crash of, 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 of recent, but how are these guys doing this? Go to Jumia. How is Jumia handling? How is Jumia handling their customers? How are they? uploading so much images and their yeah, server is not crashing. So until we get to that point of asking how and why and what are they using to to what to achieve all these things, yeah, we might not really get to that stage. So we now go back to our drawing board. So, okay, let's say for instance Jumia now, how are they managing their their images and they're not plugging up their server. So you now write it down, okay, how can I and I optimize my server as a backend developer. You write that down, then you begin to what research on it. Begin to research on it. Then you take another app again. How is this guy doing? How is WhatsApp doing? Is uh, what's it called? It starts it's starting. Are they using WebSocket under the hood? Are they using the uh, web push for their notifications? So until we begin to ask questions like that, until we begin to like have, have a period, you find go and we begin to ask questions around that go. We might not really shine in this field. Can can anyone confirm if I am still being heard? Yes, you I are. can hear you, sir. Great, 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 great. So, so my my rendition about writing a robust API. There is there is a no no similar way in writing a good API. If we want to be honest with ourselves. No similar way, we're not write a good API, but just all this knowledge, all this knowledge put together, all these chunks put together, we make us become a better developer. All this knowledge, and we are sticking to it, we are adhering to it. We go back to the basics. If you're using Java, you want to learn your dependency injection, you want to learn your IOC, you want to learn your Java stream, you want to learn all those things, all those fundamentals that will make you shine out. You want to learn your spring boots. You, uh, you want to learn, know a little bit about your Spring before diving into Spring Boot. Then if you're using Node.js, you want to learn about uh, how you can write raw Node.js without using Express, how you can spin off your server without using Node.js. Then you want to learn, you want to go to Node.js.org and just read documentations. You want to know your request object. What is request object? What is response object? What is the next function doing? What are middlewares? How can I achieve middlewares? How can I create my own middleware? How can I secure secure my my API? How can I use Elmet? How can I use compression? How can I use so you 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 begin to deep deep down into your language or into your stack? That is why I I said uh, you want to have you want to be known for one thing. There's this Brazilian guy that writes uh, Node.js on LinkedIn. Brazilian guy, the, the guy we use. JavaScript for, for his AI, you use JavaScript for his API, we use JavaScript for anything, anything in the world. I saw him of recent, he was controlling his, his TV, his TV using JavaScript. The guy the guy is one of the Node.js experts. So the guy is known for one thing. He's known for 
by language and is an expert on that field. I'm not saying don't learn Rust for, don't learn Solidity for your Web3, don't learn Python for your AI, but you want to be really known for one thing. People that are known for for one thing, they are they are the ones that are really making 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 wave. I don't know if I'm making sense. They are the ones that are really making wave. So you, you want to dig down into your Node.js. I'm talking to the Node.js developer if we have any here too. So you want to learn, learn okay, how can I connect my Node.js to my MongoDB? How can I use Mongo clients instead of using an ORM, which is Mongoose? How can I use Monk, another ORM? Then how can I use my Bcrypt to, uh, to hash my password or my Scrypt to hash my password or my Agon2 to hash my password? So there, there are different ways, ways of doing it. I can have spin up a Docker container. I don't want to use my local. I don't because I am, I am using uh, a, a laptop that is let's say 16 gigabytes that has 16 gigabyte RAM, and I don't want to use up my space. Oh, but how can I create a Node.js without downloading? I, I mean, I can always spin up a MongoDB. Uh, what's it called? Uh, driver without downloading it on my system, without having Compass. Then I can use a Docker. I just spin up a Docker container, then I run it. I can pull images from Docker Hub and all other things. So all these snippets, all this knowledge in snippets in, in chunks can be put together, can be knitted together to make us better. Again, I, I want to advise that we stick stick to a path, then we, then we learn it thoroughly. Stick and learn. That has been one of the things that I preach most times when I preach. So because if you learn this, this, this thing very well, if you learn a language very well, it's very easy for you to work, to, to port, to port on another language. That is, of course, when, when we've, we've made our money, Abi. So it is very easy for us to spot on our language. Let's say uh, I, I know JavaScript very well. I know what is data, data uh, what's it called, data types. I know what is closure. I know what is uh, all these fundamentals. They are most time 80% similar. Most time 80% similar. Now it's like we are using the word this Pareto rule. 80%, 20%. If it's 80% similar, then what is just difference is just their syntax. Go to any any programming language. The same thing that we are writing, but different syntax. The same thing we are writing, different syntax. I was talking to some of my students today. I told them, some were arguing, can I use Python for, for what they call, for blockchain? A guy was arguing, no, can I use Python? That no, JavaScript is the best. Some were saying it's a solidity. Some were saying it's maybe at the end of the day, I told them that all these they're just like tools. They're like tools. Don't don't see it as uh, it is until I use this language because before I can achieve my okay building a robust API. No, they're just like tools. It is now left to the uh to, to the user of that tool to now what bring out the best of that tool. So I, I don't argue uh, online that, okay, which one is the best tool? No, 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 no. It is what can I do with this tool? Because every every language has has, has, a, has its own role in this in this tech space. Every language has its own role. So uh, my conclusion right now is just like, just that. Learn your fundamentals very well. Learn your fundamentals. I cannot stress that fast enough. Learn your fundamentals very well, especially uh, when it comes to all this API, learn how to secure your API. I heard of recent that some uh, some guy lost uh, at least it was uh, I think it was ten million ten million era, yeah Be because their backend API was very porous and and they could just take some tokens and cut away that with some money. So you you want to learn your fundamentals very well. You want to block all, all, all partial learning. I mean, by like partial learning is that when uh, it happened to me too, when I was learning, I would want to like quickly skim through a topic, skim through a topic, then leaving the important ones because I am I am very eager to learn. I want to learn this thing very fast. Then we, we, we skip the, the minute information which are very, very, very crucial to our APIs, our, our backend development journey. So uh, I think that will be all for me for this night.
it's just sticking to having a roadmap, stick to it, learn your fundamentals, learn your fundamentals, and I think we are good to go. To go, like I said earlier on, there are no right way, there are no wrong way. If I if you go to uh, YouTube, check Net Ninja, check Traverse Media, check Web Simplify, check all those guys. It is not what they they, they write uh, in year. 2020 that they're writing now they keep developing so sometimes they, they will say this is the best way to write this thing then maybe in the next year they'll say oh i made in this in this uh, in the last video i made a mistake there but this is the right way you should write that's why i say there are no right right way or wrong way so far you 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 are i can decide to write all my apis in a single file i decide to write all my hub on my server i write my my api my server my routes my controller, my login, my logger using maybe uh, Pino or Wisting inside a single file. Single file. At the end of the day, my employer is not is not bothered about the direct it's inside a single file. It's bothered about results. So as as backend, as frontend, as Zevo, we must be what results oriented. And how can we do it by knowing our fundamentals, by knowing our honors very well. Know your honors very well. I'm I'm not saying use this guy. I'm not saying use roadmap. As SH as a guide, but have have a starting point. Ah, look, this is what I, I want to achieve by the end of March. I want to be able to uh, write transactions using using three different databases on Mongoose, on uh, on MySQL, on Postgres. Ah, uh, okay. What is this guy even saying? What is, what is uh, Elastic Search? Where's that guy? This guy. What does this guy mean? Then you can now begin to what work on Elastic Search. Okay, I've been hearing about architectural patterns. What is the difference between monolithic app and microservices? What's the difference? How, how can I decouple my app from just using one single folder, one single source code? What is this guy used for? Rabbit MQ. So you, you keep asking yourself question. Okay, well, Rabbit MQ. They, they have a what a publisher uh, or or a producer. So how can I uh, write event-driven API? How can I write all those things? So when we begin to ask questions, okay, I have WebSocket here. How can I work on WebSocket? What is WebSocket used for mainly? Okay, it's used for chatting. It's used for real-time bidirectional API, like your uh, chat app, like tracking tracking uh, your uh, parcels, let's say, on Jumia and the code. So after moving away from WebSocket, you want to go, okay, what is, why are people going towards Docker? Why are people now flooding towards Docker? What is the benefit of using Docker over our traditional or, or our conventional way of writing APIs or building projects? Then you want to move to Nginx. What, why, why is Nginx important? Why is load balancing important? Why is, uh, is it that some, some uh, APIs will crash? So we need, we need to ask ourselves a question. To have some, and we must be hungry for knowledge. We'll be hungry for knowledge. But I, I think this guy is a, start, is a good starting point for us. Even to go, even to like uh, swim, swim into backend development. This guy is is very is very detailed for us. You can just go through it. Can, for those that are into front end that are on this call too, you can just work up, just learn one thing or the other. So I think um, I'll stop here. And I'll open the window for for questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening, and thank you, David, for having me. Okay, sir. So yeah. some, of, oh, some of our hands are up already on on the first list here. I have Hussein. Hussein, please ask your question. Hussein, uh, hi. Can Can you hear me? Can you hear me, guys? Yes, yes, I can hear you, Sim. Uh, Hello, Hussein, I can hear you. Okay, I think I, I lost him there too. Okay. okay, I also have a question, sir. Okay. Okay, but at first, I would love to appreciate you for being around. You know, it's inside your office. David, 
right? Am I still being heard? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I have a question. I want to ask. Um, when you talk about the back end, and the next thing I hear is API. So I'm sure some of us are here that don't really understand what, what um, the back end holds. So if you could um, please help us um, simplify what back end is all about. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you for that question. Backend is just like the building the server side of every application. What we cannot see. I like to use this example anytime I'm talking about backend. Anytime you go to that website like facebook.com, then you see three input fields. Abby. You see your first name, last name, password, or probably email. And the moment you click that login button or sign up button, I mean sign up button, your data are not going to heaven, right? So your data are being stored somewhere. It's being stored in a database, like an express, like a like a spreadsheet. So backend is handling all those all those stuffs, handling the server side application stuff that we cannot see with our eyes. They we, we build API. API is what we call application programming interface. They're like uh, protocols that we use to communicate with server side and client side. And client side can be your mobile apps. I mean, your uh, what's it called? Your front end people that are building UI, UI and UX. All those guys can even be your postman as it as a postman for testing API, API testers. So it's like a protocol and a guide and a standard. When we say we're beginning API, we're beginning backend API, like a standard, a protocol, like HTTP protocol, your IPAR text transfer protocol. Sorry about that. For communicating between two ends. See it like I am communicating with two hands. I'm communicating from, from point XYZ to point ABZ. So backend apps also write API like in the form of maybe JSON format or email formats. They're using uh, Java to communicate with our client, which can be a mobile app. So when the mobile app want to want to render, sorry about that. Wow. When the uh, mobile app wants to, sorry about that. I don't know what this thing is. Doing. When the mobile app wants to consume, let's say if they want to, or or the guys writing in React, if they want to display images, I mean they want to display images. Sometimes they are not displaying the actual image. In sense we are giving them strings. Strings maybe from coronary, maybe converted from uh, to base 64. We're giving them string that they can convert, they can input dynamically inside your their HTML, their image, uh, they that, that arrow I IMG, then the source is our string. If they want to impute, uh, let's say a name, we are sending it from our from our side, from from the database, from your MongoDB. It's like your expert, your your spreadsheet, your Excel sheet. So we are sending them data. So backend is basically all those all those jobs, all those jobs that you cannot really see. The logical parts of an application, stuff that you cannot see. It's not like UI, not like uh, what's it called, not like your mobile app. So David, okay, please continue. Okay, sir. I still have another. Okay. So, okay. 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 So let's say I'm learning a particular programming language. At what point do I should I say I'm able or I should start um, start building um, an application or a backend? At what point do I, do I feel um, um, maybe I'm able to start building something? Okay, okay. I will I will first raise uh, I'll raise the disclaimer first. There are you can learn backend at any point in time but this is always my this has been my advice for anybody that wants to go into this space first the, the the trend is that the chain is that you learn a bit of front end front end that you migrate to back end then back end to either devops or maybe sra that is just the chain the standard but but i have seen guys that are moving from their doctor they are, they are doctors, medical doctors, to backend directly, even without having having a backend knowledge, no prior knowledge. So, but but it will you will do well, you will do well, you will skill well if you have a bit, you have understanding about front end. You know what 
what we call HTML. How can I render HTML? How can I learn a bit of CSS? It is not compulsory, like I said earlier. It is not compulsory, but you want to learn have little knowledge about it. I have I have I have two taught guys, guys that do not have knowledge about backend before, but they are doing well. But it, it took extra extra coaching, extra uh extra tutorials for them to just work up that speed. But but you can just jump into back end even without having front end. But like, like I said, it's best that you have a bit of knowledge about front end. I hope okay. I was able to answer that. Yeah. Yes, 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 of course you were. Okay, I also uh, want to ask, uh, please, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm taking your time again because you, you said you were going to stay for a few minutes. No problem. No problem. Please okay. go ahead. Okay, so I would love you to maybe tell us about a time where you had to uh, build something in the back end and tell us how it went, you know, everything that was involved from the beginning to till the end. <laughs> So let me uh, okay. Let me open this website. I don't know if my server is very. Okay, let me. My this is slow. Okay, this is this one of the uh, website that I built that I worked on with some some guys. It's called Specific dot com. It's like a uh, luxury service apartment. Sit as your Airbnb. It's because I'm projecting that. That is why it's a bit slow now. Now, if I want to start a backend, I want to start start my my work. I will first request for the user story. I'll request for the user story. Okay, this is what is embedded in user story. User story is like a a, a document comprising of what a user can do, the rules they can perform. For instance, now. As a backend developer, the way I work, I don't ask for Figma, I don't ask for the UI, I ask for that document or a chat flow. Now, in that user story, they will state there that, okay, as a user, a user must be able to what? Register. Look at this endpoint, register. Then, what are the parameters that are embedded in that user registration? We have the first name, last name, email, phone number, password, confirm passwords. This is what I need. I just need this document first name, last name, email, phone number, password okay number two a user must be able to what sign sign in then what are the parameters that are needed the, we need what the email and password just two things so it's like a, a, a document containing an explicit document containing what the user can perform on on the application so once i have that the next thing to do is to just build build my uh my api i'll look uh, at the tools that I need. If on that uh, user story, they say, okay, user must be able to upload, upload what, uh, let's say images as profile. I know by experience that I need what Cloudinary to upload my images and motor. If on the user story, they say, okay, uh, a, a user must be able to download or, or send email. I know that I need NodeMailer. NodeMailer is used for sending email, NodeMailer, or any SMTP provider like MailGun, and analyze. So once I have a user story, the user story is the first thing that is required. Some some backend developer they work with UI. They work with. Let me show you. Let me make myself vulnerable this time. Let me see if I can show you a Figma design. So this is this is one of this one project. Okay, this this is what I what, what I mean. So some some developer we we ask for some backend we ask for these guys. They will say okay as a, as a user we need to what we need to we have two type of account we have service provider I am a user then the request for this parameter full name email phone number password then again after after hitting on this button we go to what OTP confirmation then you need to know that we need what OTP service provider. I don't know if you understand me. You need to send OTP via maybe via SMS or uh, via email. Then again, we need for password. But all these things, when when we have it 
at at uh, at uh, at bet. Let me use the word bet. B i r t h at bet. It was not this guy. They were just documents. A user must be able to do this. Must be able to uh, forget password. A user must be able to create password. So once all these all these things are now stated clearly, now you now look for the tools that you you need to build. Okay, am I using am I using a uh, MongoDB? Is uh, MongoDB best for this kind of application? Am I using Postgres? Am I using uh, MySQL? You now determine the kind of DB you want to use. Then after that, just have, okay, what kind of architecture do you, do you want to go by? Am I just building everything inside inside a single folder or inside a single folder? Yes, like I want to have my user user okay let me let me see if i can show you one so i'll show you one i love being practical okay let's see let's see this one so you you want to say okay am i building everything here inside a single file you want to say okay am i building every or building or am i building am i building them in as services services mean I will have, instead of having user here, admin, booking, I can have a different project for admin. I can have a different project for house listing. I can have a different project folder for user. So this, this is one is just a single um, folder containing all my projects. Now, you just need to break them, just to start with user story. Once user story is uh, explicit enough, I think you can kick start from there. Okay, Philemon. Let's go ahead. Please. Yes, hello. Yeah, I, just, I, just, I just wanted to ask um, when I wanted to learn React, but can I learn React without JavaScript knowledge? No. Capital no. Capital no. As a as a, as a matter of fact, they, they they ask people to to learn JavaScript before going to you learn your by banana JavaScript. How, how you can embed your JavaScript inside uh, your HTML all those all those things before going to React. Be, because when you get to React, you will still meet your higher other functions there, your your map, your reduce, your filter, and whatnot. So it is best that you take your time to to be grounded. We heard that from JavaScript. JavaScript is like a language. Some people call React a framework or a, or a library. On, if you don't understand, uh, let's say you don't understand uh, English language and you want to jump to IHLS exam. So you need to understand your language very well before moving to a framework. What uh, React does that it, it gives us the liberty to write efficient, like a component-based application. You can like you can write, you can build a component, then reuse, reuse that stuff, and that component. So I would advise that you learn JavaScript very well before moving to React. I hope I was able to have that. Okay, David. Okay, go ahead. thank you. Okay, so, so please, I, 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 I have another question here. So earlier on, you said when building a backend that we should always consider our security. So here... Want to ask. Okay, there, there, are, there are several, uh, several ways to it. Uh, I think one of the best ways to, to ensure security is to understand OS holes in APIs. What I mean by holes, H-O-L-E-S in APIs. What are the kind of attacks that I can have on my on my service? A, a popular one is called uh, DDoS, denial of service. Let's say somebody, somebody is trying to brute force your app. What I mean by brute force is that I'm trying to, let's say for this app now, I can write a, a script for this app that can register 1 million users in just single days. Single day, I mean, I can write uh, even not even from this UI. I can take the address in their API. I mean, their link, their URL. I will now write 
an API, like a function, to register, let's say, 1 million users in a single day. So how can I stop that action from taking place on my app by using something like uh, what we call rate limiter? I can say, okay, once I receive a request, let's, let's say 10 requests under, under 10 minutes or under five minutes, because a normal person, a sane human being, will not uh, want to uh, sign up at that rate. Once I have, let's say, 100 requests within one minute, I know that something is wrong somewhere. Somebody is trying to what, hack my my API or my application. Then I need to what? I need to what? Rate limit it and say, okay, once you hit this endpoint more than a specified number of time, just what? Block that person. You can use him and what? And block keep that person from using that API forever. Another one is uh, uh, validation. You can validate your impute fields. Don't allow the front end, I say most time, don't allow the front end to control what is coming into your application. Even if the front end is running that, okay, in your, in your uh, let's say, phone number, don't allow anything that is not what? Digits. So you can say if it's uh, alphabet, what? True error, true it out. You don't want alphabet in your phone number because this guy is, they can be used by hackers to what? To infiltrate your, your application. So the first thing is to what? learn the type of attack that you can have on your application because of what you don't know you cannot defend so what you don't know have any other about you don't know uh, sql injection you don't know xxx attack you don't know the dos attack so once you know them can i say okay how can i prevent them because i'm using no js with no js they using python how can i python I use Java. How can I prevent such attack on my Spring Boot application and the likes? I do. I, I I think you understand my point. Ask question or okay so as a back end yeah i maybe i know a little about front end which means i don't really know all the structure and everything so how do you communicate or how do you collaborate with a front end developer to ensure that okay. the front end and layers of the application okay okay i i think it's a function of your of your company that question the function of where you work so if you work in a uh, in a standard company which you have a, a project manager that manages uh, the communication between the front end and the back end with tools like Jira, with tools like Trello, with tools like ClickUp. So you can have uh, like a tax, okay, or like a, let's say Figma, let's say Figma, let's even say Figma. This, this guy is my pro designer now. I can say, okay, this thing, I don't understand this guy. I can just click my button, click here, uh, so, 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 so. Can you please, can you please, uh, let me write to you very well, please explain what this guy is doing. That is one. So I'm communicating with my pro designer now, Abi. Then you can use tools like Postman. Postman are there for documentation of our APIs. Let, let me open this guy, please. Uh, okay. Postman. So Postman is, is used for writing uh, for testing APIs. I mean testing API. Then you want to you want to be very clear about what you're writing. This is what I mean. Uh, so you want to Okay, let me let me use another one. Let me use another one. I think this one is uh... okay. So you want to be clear so that you don't have uh you don't have issues with your API. I mean with your friendly developer. You want to write your documentation very well, like your if you use a log scene, Abby, you want to have your bad request. That is bad request sample. So what if it is a success? You want to have that one too. 
Okay, if you are seeing success, you see something like this, a message and a token. But if you are seeing invalid credentials, you see something like status error, error, invalid credentials. For forgot password, so you want to have all those stops here. If you are seeing 404, you want to send back something that is very clear to your front-end developer. So again, you want to use tools like, like your Slack, like your Trello, like Jira, like, like your ClickUp, like even your Figma, like uh, your Postman documentation, like your Swagger documentation to communicate, like even your readme too. It might not be a uh, verba, it, it might be asynchronous in such, in such that uh, it might not be uh, a day-to-day -day or a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but you are living, you are living uh, like trails, like, like Mac. I'm living a Mac here on my Figma board. I'm living a Mac here for him to read through. I'm leaving, leaving Mac on my Postman documentation. Okay, these are the two that I'm using. This is how you can you can run this app, how you can communicate, how you can to so the how you can. You are leaving them at different points. So it's not just a, a, a one way thing. But like I said earlier, if you have a, a if you're if you're working in a standard company and you have a PM, so the, the PM should manage the communication between you guys. That was the best thing. Management of people, the front end, the mobile app, the product designer and the back end developer. So I, I think uh, Alfonso is raising his hand up. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. And the question I have is, uh, well, when you're working with the back end, uh, can we work with uh, back end before maybe front end? Or I have to first wait for the front end developer to finish his work and then I also start mine. Oh, okay, thank you for that question. Um, you don't have to wait for front end. Don't bother. The only person that you can wait for, you might want to wait for, is the pro designer. The only person that you might want to wait for, like I said earlier, that the only thing that you you need you need at all is your user story. Like a user must be able to do this and all. So once you have that document, I think you can just move on with that. You don't have to wait for your front end. You can you can you can work without because what your front end we just need from you is just your data consumption. That's all. That the what is just uh, merging you and your front end together is your data consumption. Like okay, I want to consume your API. Okay, give me the login API. I want to consume it. Give me the uh, register API. I want to consume it. So, guy, back in developer, what, what are the payloads that you're passing? I'm passing first name. So you don't need all those information, but waiting for them, I, I don't think that's the best way to work. So you can just work, I would suggest you work uh, more with these guys, the pro designer. You work more with, with them because they are the one that will say, okay, I have two types of users here. I have the service provider and then I have the user. Okay, in your schema, you want to have a, uh, a field for what? type of accounts do you get then uh for your what's it called sign up you want to have all this field then if you are seeing confirmation on code you want to have your otp code there too to create a new password you should know that okay i will need a, a password and a confirmed password then when you go to this guy say okay what I, what do we have here we have categories we have shoemaker and the and the lives so you want to work more with these guys and your pm than the front end guys i'm not saying don't work with them so when it, when it now comes to testing of api when it comes to when you are done or when, when you are half done or when you are cut out done with your api then you can now say okay uh front end developer do you have any issues with my api if there's any concern can you just please raise it please any any concern then they'll say okay this is a string error what you are passing here is, is correct is, i mean it's not correct instead of passing first name here for example, this is one of the issues I have with front end sometimes is that when I give them something like this payload, I'll give them first name, first name, or they write first name in camel case, or some will write last name in in snake case, snake kissing. Now, when they test this guy with my API, they will say it's not working. They'll be saying something like, uh, this guy is not working, whereas they are not passing the actual actual data because uh Programming language, they are, they are what? They are case sensitive. First name is not the same thing as first name. They're very different. First name like this is not the same thing as what? First name. So you need to just 
then at that point you can now say okay uh guy you made a mistake at this point it should not be a uh, camel case it should be what sneakies so the, the the submission is that you want to work more with your user story and your product designer at the early phase of your development then at the testing phase testing phase then you can now work more with your front end developers So Alfonso, I hope I was able to ask on that. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. okay, this is actually very, very great. It was even more than what I expected, sir. I, I would have had more questions, but I believe I the questions I have, I will redirect them to you as a personal stuff. So I want to really, okay. really yeah, I want to really appreciate you for making out the time to come out, even though you had something to attend to, but you completed it to just be here. I would be really, really appreciate that. So, if anybody has more questions, I'm going to drop your handle to your LinkedIn so that they will be able to um, come there and connect with you and also ask the questions that they might have, just like me now. So, sir, I want to oh, really, I want to really appreciate you for being available today. And I say, God bless you. Thank, thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, so I, I want to also make a request that um, if yeah, it's possible, we would love to have you again another time. Yes, 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 yes. I'll be, I'll be glad to attend. I'll be glad to attend. Even for, for a practical session, I'll be glad to attend. Okay, that would be very, very nice. That would be very nice. I will let you know on, on the arrangement on when you should be available to us again. Thank oh, you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So, please, everybody, you could unmute your mic now. I'd say thank you to Mr. Abayomi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abayomi. Thank you so thank much, sir. You. Really, really You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're thank welcome. you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so we really, really appreciate it. So, this is a community of, of, of just us trying to um, do what. We want to do we are um, everybody here or almost everybody here is currently enrolled in alx software engineering program so we have oh. a yeah we have a community where uh, we just try to meet up and learn um with ourselves because um what we have here in in, in ALX, the curriculum is very fast so most of the time we don't get to meet up and learn with them so with the community oh. we have sometimes when this one learn we hold a session and you teach us how you teach us what you know and we just go in circles like that so oh okay okay, okay. Understand. all right sir. So, so thank you for your time everyone thank you okay sir thank you very much i'm looking forward to seeing you again okay, thank you all right okay so that was a great one there and i want to believe we all got value from there but i'm surprised most of us didn't ask questions we had in mind or i want to believe maybe someone else asked the same question you had in mind and it was it for you so i want to thank everybody for coming out man it was a great one i'm really really happy that we actually um held this particular session because i got to ask the things i had in mind and for the ones i couldn't ask i'm definitely going back to asking yeah so i believe we all have things to say so i will open the chance now for us to ask or, or say something about this so, blessing you, Kumike. Please, go on. Okay, thank you so much, David. Uh, to be sincere, right? Um, I know, like he did, he did um, justice to the topic. But you see, some of us, right? We, we, everything sounded like French, and I don't understand French. To be sincere, <laughs> so <laughs> it was too deep for some of us. You get? It's yeah. when you have, when you know what to ask. That's when you ask. But you don't wait this one. It was too ah, we have not gotten there, some of us. <laughs> so we didn't know what to ask. That's why we kept quiet. <laughs> okay, That's why we kept quiet. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. It, it, it's okay, it's okay. I, I understand. I understand. But then but then you would have still let him know and say, Okay, what you are saying is very deep. Can you help us bring it down to our level? Because he believes that okay, we are people that are already in the tech, so we have a career path, let's say, in the back end, so we know what we are doing. So that is how he pictures us. Yeah, I get David. See, I really under I understand where you're coming from, but the truth is, 
some of us we have listened to some things when we go back and by the time we get to that place those things that he has said will now begin to make sense to us you understand yeah, well for now because we have not experienced some of those things and we it, it's just sounding like spanish you get so i believe that yeah. with time we come and then meet what some of the things he has said in front and then we'll get to understand it better but it was an awesome session at least i picked some things i picked some things Good. so i'm i'm really happy all right thank well, you so I'm, much I'm very, david yeah i appreciate you for being around so i'm happy to hear that at least you learned something and you are one of my back-end engineers so definitely in the future i'm going to be asking you all the questions i have in mind too um blev, blev. okay so other person still have questions okay christiana more please ask us what's going to okay good evening david okay I appreciate the session, yeah? Just like Blessing said, maybe before he comes again, let him know the community, what we are made up of, kind of, our level in tech. So that he can, <laughs> yeah, so, so that he can know how to talk to us and how to bring it down to our level, if you don't mind. I think that's it. Because you're saying maybe we could have told him. But if you have already let him know like people that he's going to meet the people he's going to talk to what we are or whatever or our level in tech it might help you better please okay. i appreciate everything you did but uh, so yeah, true, true. I, I on that one i understand how that can be okay so he Thank was you, all right all right i appreciate it too so uh, this way, the way I communicate with him, so he feels every one of us are, let's say, almost the same. But then he doesn't know that there are some of us that are from cohort, maybe, let's say, 12, who just joined in the tech. But however it is, however it is, I believe we've learned some things from here. So maybe in the future, the things we learn from here are going to be of use to us. So let us not see it like it is way above of us. Just note all those things and keep it so that whenever it comes your way, you remember that, okay, we did this and is important so i have to use it now yeah so that's actually nice though okay so bright in your basket please speak now okay uh thank you david for bringing in um uh, about your being like lesson said i think she spoke her mind so the thing um that's that that's that, that my mind now is i think what you, i think one of the questions we should be asking now is how does because what he said, he, he spoke a lot of things at the, the higher level. But I think what we should, we should be asking now is how does all that ELX, ELX teaching us, how does the ELX curriculum fit into this, all these things that he has said? Is ELX guiding us on this path? You know, all these things we are doing, the projects we are doing one after the other, are they actually leading us towards this path for those that want to go back in engineering? And even, for, and, and even for those that, that want to go into front engineering, I think one of the questions we should, we should be asking is, is ELX as in taking us on this path? And if ELX is actually doing it, I think we should actually note it and then see how we can you know, take the learning seriously. So I, that's just what I want you to say. Okay, okay, great, great, great. Okay, I, I, I think, for it, yeah, it does. It does, because if you check our curriculum, most of the things you mentioned, like they are almost all there. Yeah, it, it is. So if you go back and look at the roadmap it showed us, some of the things, almost everything there uh, in our curriculum, if you open our curriculum down, down. At some point, there was a time I looked at our, our curriculum and I was like, this is almost too much for us to learn in 12 months, given that we also have our personal lives to attend to, not just ALS. So it was just ALS, I would have said, yes, we could do it, but having a personal life too, uh, all those things. But yes, they are all there. It is. I believe this is just the beginning part of our of, of us in here. Like, so these are the basics. There, there, is, there are times that if you look at our curriculum, you get you understand what, what I'm trying to say. I believe. Okay, right. Thank you. Okay, so I'll go to the next person. I have here. Edu Brazil. Edu Brazil, please speak now. All right. Um, good evening, Mr. David. Um, uh, first of all, our speaker that just left, 
I have learned a lot of things from what he said. First of all, humility, he started teaching. He said something about roadmap. Immediately, immediately, immediately he just mentioned the website. I just opened the next tab and go to the website immediately. So I saw everything there. I was just, my eye was just open. I said, wow. And one thing I really grabbed from him, he talks about uh, the back end that he, he now uses Facebook as an example that if if you log in, as in whatever you're inputting is something that you you can't see. Then I begin to ask myself some question. That means each time I do log in my Facebook, that means nobody sees it. So, and some of the things that he, he said, I've not heard all those things before. And according to what Blessed said, like Chinese language, I've not heard those language before in programming. So, I believe from time to time, we will learn more things from him. Thank you. All right, all right. I appreciate that. At least you acknowledge that you've learned something and you will use it in the future. Okay, so let me also say that um, this was a session for us to get to you know what back you know um we have a specialization to also attend to which is back end and front end so this was a session for for us to get to know what back end is so that when we get so that we could choose our road i'm sorry our specialization before time and start to um put our mind there okay so that whatever we learn we know that okay i i need this or i don't need this so that was what this our session was really about not for us to say let's jump into the back end but to have an idea of what back end is. So I believe we've had a session where um, someone spoke on, on front end, but then it was then that most of us were not around. So I believe we are going to have another session with another um, another engineer um, to come and speak on the front end, you know, in particular. So definitely we'll get to understand all these things as time um, comes, please. Okay, so Hussein, Hussein, you have a question or you, you want to say something? Uh Thanks for organizing this for us. Um, by the way, it was really uh, insightful and important and educative. But mine is not uh, technically like a question related to the topic we just uh, discussed today or from the from the mentor. My question, guys, is related to c -Lowood. I'm sure most of you, you are ahead of me. Maybe you're probably in co co uh, 11 or 10 or something. Did you really, guys, like, understood everything in C. Did, did I, do I have to understand everything? Or I can just pass? Because I'm at that point where, where I'm thinking maybe I'll probably need to defer and try to, to really understand this language before moving forward. Or, or maybe it's not necessary, I just need to understand the best. Okay, okay. Uh, the question is if we uh, actually understood everything in C. Uh, no, no, nobody, even a professional will tell you that they, they, they never understood everything in a particular thing, but you, you could learn to some extent, you will understand the things you should understand. Yes. So most of the, the projects you have in LS, I used to tell people that um, when you understand the concept, that is really, really what you need. Okay. When you want, like somebody just said now in the, in the comment book that they're still learning C. I'm still learning C. Yes. Exactly. So you should learn the concept. Try to understand the concept. If after you learn the concept, you look up for some exercises that has that particular concept in it. If you are able to solve it, not just LS project, because most of us, we position our mind on LS project. And at the end of the day, we cannot solve it. So it makes us feel frustrated, like we are not doing anything at all. It's so cool. you should, yeah, so you should try to learn the concept very well and then look up for exercises. And on that concept, if you can solve like two, three, four exercises on that particular concept, it means you understand that concept. And then you go back to your ALS project and give it a try. If you cannot still understand it, you ask questions to see how other people attempted it. So with time, you will get to know how you could do it. Now, I, I gave us an example once that um, we could learn something in school. Back then, um, in school, you could they could teach you one plus one, which is two. And then they will give you an assignment, which is 1.5 plus 1.5. We learn how to add integers, whole numbers, not floats. And then they are giving you assignments on floats. So how, how then do they expect you to do it? So if you cannot do 1.5 1, 1, uh, 1 plus 1.5, it doesn't mean that you don't understand the concept, but because that was not what we were taught. So what you could do is to go back and study more and see, okay, uh, this is actually floats. 
I need to know it. And when you get to know flow, then you'll be able to do 1.5 plus 1.5. And you already know how to add into that. So it's, it's a whole process. And you should take your time to understand and learn it. Whatever you don't understand, feel free to ask questions. Me too, today I ask questions a lot. Even on the Python, we are doing that. Um, it seems very simple to me. But then I still ask questions. Okay, I ask before I finish a particular task, like number one task inside of a project, I must have asked questions like four or five persons on a particular thing. And at the end of the day, I'll get five answers from the different people. And I have known how to do this thing in five different ways. So this is how basically how you could improve yourself. Don't focus on your deadline or scores or anything. Like me, I, these days, you see my score like 80 something percent out of 200. It's very, it's very, very stressful to do all those things like that. But then, if I understand the concept and I come back and I do it by myself, man, I'm very happy. It's very enjoyable. So that is basically it. I believe with time you 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 understand how it works. Just keep on learning and practicing. Okay, Hussein. Okay, thanks, man. Thanks very much. Okay, appreciate that. Okay, so I believe we still have more more hands up. Okay, the virus, please speak. Oh, um, good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening from my side. I, I do actually know where you are from, though. But yeah, from my side, good evening. Okay. Yeah, okay. I I actually joined um this um this class or this section late, sorry. This, I actually joined this section late. So I just wanted to know what in specialization is. Because what when I came like, like when I came in, he was already talking about uh, he was just talking about um I think he was already it, it was like five minutes before he ended, I guess so. Okay. So like I do not really understand okay. lots, but, okay. but I just wanted to understand like I, I I just want to know what his specialization is, what he does. Okay, he's See, a backend. So, huh? He's a, a, a backend developer. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. You know, I I announced yesterday we'll be having a session today, uh, a meet today with um with a backend developer to um speak to us about backend development and what it can tell. So this is our yeah, yeah, yeah. So we usually yeah, have. So. Okay. So we usually have this kind of session where we we'll bring in outsiders like. Professionals come and speak to us about a particular thing, not just about what we're doing in LS, but to open our eyes on what is going on in the world so that we could also position our mind and say, okay, this is what we are um, we're all between in a few months um, to come. Okay. Yeah, actually, in LSC, I have a um, Airbnb for you guys now. So. Yeah, we're not um, talking about any to discuss on back end. Yeah? Okay. I said we're not discussing on any project at all. It was it was enlightening us on backend development, backend as as what we should know in backend development. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, because okay, and I actually heard you when you were saying. Uh, sorry, I actually heard you when you were saying this. This starts are actually um, pretty easy for you. This one's now. I don't know if that's how I, it is. Yeah. I didn't hear, hear what you said. Um, I say I was actually I, I like I actually heard you where you say this was this task now very easy and uh, it's Python. No, yeah, the, the Python tags, the Python tags. If you compare it to what we had in C, is actually simple than what we had in C. That's what I'm. I'm not saying it's simple like exclusively it's simple. No, but compared to what we had in C, at least I'm not starting afresh to learn everything. I just all I need to know, do is just to learn how to write a particular thing in another programming language but then i understand how the whole concept and logic that's what i mean okay uh, okay yeah um sorry i just wanted to ask are we having a class today or is that the end of the class no we are not having any class today this was what today was for oh, okay yes thank you very much all right thank you for being around okay so um fast catching on so you have something to say? Um, okay. Um, good evening, guys. Good evening, everybody. Okay, good evening. And um, first of all, I want to appreciate um, you, Mr. David, for bringing this um, the first person around. Even though he started from from the top, but uh, still, I, I, I was able to pick one or two things from there. You know, one of the sites he 
you get to resolve the roadmap, um, the, the roadmap uh, sites. It's something ALS has given to us also. For some of us that usually follow up on the activities on Slack, they give us something like this. And in, inside of it, it's not just about back end. There you see data engineering, you see data scientists, you see the quality assurance and the rest of it. All of the roadmap to it, we are all provided by one of the, the top um, software development guys that came around for a session with um, those of them that we are around. So I was part of it and I, I had I got the opportunity of um, getting hold of, of this very site that he talked about today. So um, my advice to, to us is even though, yes, I know that some of the things that he said was not really going down well, but it's just like um, somebody that has opened our mind to what we are to expect in the long run. Because basically, even when I came into ALX and I was seeing stuff like Shell, Git, Emacs, and Vim, and my, my friend that was one quote ahead of me when he was talking about some of these things, they sounded very, very, very strange to me. They sounded very strange to me. But what it, what it was able to do for me was that it, 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 it made me prepared. Like I already, I already knew I was going to be expecting stuff like this. So when I have to look back on these things now, and I'm seeing stuff like it, and it doesn't look like I'm doing it, it doesn't look difficult to me. But initially, two or three months ago, when I was seeing it, it was, it was looking for him. But now it is no longer like that, because already I have, I have been able to surpass it. So hearing this, these words and these things looking very strange might look like we are, we are going to be meeting something very difficult. We're going to pass this thing at some point. And we, we all look back to these things and we see these things as common names at the long run. So my encouragement is to everybody here, let, us not, let it not deter you from, from bringing us to other resource persons, even if they wouldn't have to start giving us this concept from, from, from the foundation. However, they put it to us. One thing I know is that there will always be something to put to you from whatever it is that they give to us. And we can always hold on to that. And I believe in the long run, it will become very useful to us. So that is my take on this. Thank you once again. Okay, okay. I thank you for, for that. Everything you just said now is actually true. Yes, yeah, a few months ago, we had seen all this beam and everything else as big things and, and science that we will we, we'll not be able to do. But today now, this is what we use on a, a daily basis. And I believe too, as you said, yes, a time will come where we'll look back or we'll be the ones who actually educate others on things like, 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 like this. So I believe so. And thank you for, for that. And for some of us, we don't, we don't usually have time to also engage ourselves in um, ALX session. Okay, so we usually miss out a lot on stuff like this. So I believe this is also another way of us you know, being able to you know, catch up on some things, if possible. Although this is not going to replace what we have in ALX, but then it's better we have a little of it than not having it at all. Okay, so I believe everybody have said what they had in mind to say after our session, and I believe today was a success. Yeah, I, actually our guest was saying he was going to stay, I think, 30 minutes, but he ended up staying for an hour, and I'm going to appreciate him for that. It's not easy to put back everything. He, had, he was having, I think, a meet again with his team, something like that, and he came, it came as, as an emergency. So that is just me saying that we should... Um, I'm going to drop the, uh, the link to his LinkedIn. So you, if you want to maybe connect with him and get to know him, ask him questions, you are free to do that. He's open to that. So you could tell him that you are from the ALX community that um, that we spoke about. So he's going to uh, attend to you and answer your question. So I believe that will be all for now. Till somebody say ALX will be holding a session like this next week. You can check your email. Okay, no problem. So that will be all for now until next week. I think on Monday we'll be having a class on Python again. And then for cohort 12 and 13, we are still, we are, we've, okay, we are done preparing well because we used to have our sessions recorded. So we are trying to prepare the links and put it inside the file so that we could drop it for them. And, and then we, whenever you have a particular um, project, you just click on that particular file, you see the link to it, you get to watch everything. And then the only thing we need to do is to hold a session and answer the questions you might have. So that way it's going to be very productive than coming into a session and we start all over again and again. Okay, so the community is growing and everything is going well. So I want to thank everybody for coming out and and this session will be 
possible if you are not here. Correct. Even if, if our guest was here. So I appreciate it. Every day, I want to appreciate you for coming out. It's not easy. So thank you, everybody. And to our team head, to our, our team head, I want to appreciate all of you because I believe you pushed your your um, team persons to also be here. It's not easy. And I want to believe everything is going well. But if it is not, keep on putting more effort. Everything will go well again. I want to also appreciate you on your own end for doing that. Someone said, is there a record for today? I think so. I think so. Uh, if justice is here, then definitely uh, we should have a recorded um, session and i want to take out the time to, to also appreciate our media team they've been doing a great work to record each of our sessions yeah just yesterday we decided to put everything inside the file so that we could have it um stand by for us and then we'll be updating it from time to time it is going to be in a drive so all of these things is just so that we could we could i don't know meet up in everything like this so that nobody will lose out so please for everybody who works and try to share effort always try to appreciate them too it's not easy i can tell you so thank everybody for coming out i believe we've done just to what we had to do see you on monday again we'll meet so we can unmute our mics now and say good night to everybody and drop your emojis good night hello good night guys thank you good night everyone good night good night everybody good night hello good night good night everybody good night everybody good night everybody good night everybody good night Bye, everybody. Mr. Dickens, <laughs> Mr. Joshua, thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm blessed. Yeah, okay. Okay, you too. Good night. Blah, blah. My front end, uh, sorry, my back end <laughs> developer. I, Bright was asking me that, so I I say I have the title. I will walk into the title. <laughs> I'm not, not become yet, so let me be so, working until I, I jump so, the title. Mr. Yes, yes, sure. <laughs> well done, no. Okay, thank you, madam. So all this while, nobody knew that Blessing is a, is a back-end developer. She's a back-end developer. Tell them, tell them, tell them. It's starting to work on. Yeah, thank you, sir. She'll be, be thanking you more. She'll be thanking you I more. Thank you, thank you so thank much, you. yeah. I thank you. Right in your back, thank your mic you so has much. Been, thank you. Your mic has been mute. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, okay, great. Thank so, you right very much. Thank you for your Are you front and all back end? Ah, I prefer to back end. Ah, thank you. Thank you. We are plenty uh, in this. <laughs> study teacher. Okay, study teacher said it's back end. So that means we have strong guys in the back end. It's, sometimes I, I feel like the front end is it's just for, for, I don't know. Someone said they are full stack. Of course, we are all full stack, but then we have to specialize. Okay, somebody was saying something. 